Hey everybody, welcome back to the World Sand Project channel. My name is Toby Eunice. Thanks for joining me today and we have a beautiful and very diverse sample uh, for you from Waikoloa Beach uh, in Hawaii, the Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, it's actually called the Island of Hawaii, but people in Hawaii refer to it as the Big Island. I think you're really going to like this and I'd like to share, uh, I posted it to the Reddit uh, Rockhounds group and I'd like to share some of the comments they made in the show but stick with me I think you're gonna like this uh, sample a lot and like I said very diverse By the way, as long as I have your attention, I do want to let you know that while we will be doing our four o'clock show uh, on the softer side this afternoon, uh, there will be no a Gypsy's Kiss show tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, we put up a video explaining why, and you can also see an explanation on our community page. So, uh, but we will see you tomorrow night on the world, uh, I'm sorry, on the uh, Church of the Search. So let's take care of some. Housekeeping, you want towels? Yeah, you bet you want towels. You're out on the beach. Of course you do. Hey, uh, remember to like this video. Please like this video. Share it with your family, your friends, your neighbors, your business associates, and the entirety of your social network so that we can grow this channel. And finally, if you're not already a subscriber, this would be the ideal time to subscribe. Uh, and uh, once you click on the subscribe button, see that notifications bell, click on the notifications bell, and that way everybody, every, I'm sorry, every time we start a live stream, uh, you'll be informed and in the know, because there's nothing better in life than being in the know. Um, the other thing I want to remind you of is why we're here, the World Sand Project, although we have a lot of fun collecting these samples that folks send, send us from all over the world and showing them to you, uh, sharing them under the microscope. Our purpose here is to remind folks that sand uh, is the most third most consumed resource on the planet behind air and water, and we are consuming it at a pace more rapidly. Uh, more rapidly than the planet has the ability to replenish it. Uh, and if you want to know how much uh, of a problem this is going to cause in the near future, uh, please take a look at the playlists that we have on this channel regarding the matter of uh, sand as a non-renewable resource. It's an important topic, and uh, most of us are not aware of it as an issue, so that's why we're here to remind you that it is and to do what you can to help save uh, the planet, save us, save us and the planet. All right, uh, so before I go on to showing you the sample, I wanted to show you a couple of other things. So let's go over to screenshots right now. By the way, uh, let me reset this and make sure I can see your comments. And I'm actually live streaming. All right, so I'll put that right there in comments. So I'll get to your comments as soon as I can. Uh, let's see, you do know, you do demonetizing shows to talk about the virus. Uh, we do know that, uh, Mark, we do know, which is why we've avoided it. Uh, we're going to be live streaming to Facebook on behalf of another channel. We will not be, uh, um, live streaming as a Gypsy's Kiss. Uh, we've just been asked by a nonprofit, uh, to use our studio. So yes, we are very aware of that. We have not, uh, we have not, we have made it a point not to discuss it. That's not what we do. Okay, so let me switch over to screenshot, and I want to show you a couple of things. First of all, uh, this every every uh, the night before every show, I make a post of the of the sample of sand onto uh, two groups: the Reddit geology group and the Reddit rockhounds group. And the rockhounds group has always responded to it very warmly. Uh, you can see that they've given it 427 upvotes, and I think I uploaded this around midnight uh, my time last night. Uh, but then what's fun is I always ask them, what do you see in the image? And uh, since this was a very diverse sample, I got a heck of a lot of responses. Olivine, Olivine, uh, and then a comment that said, Hawaii is made of mafic lava, uh, which is tends towards the dark end of the spectrum. Uh, so you can see all the minerals from that end of the Bowen's reaction series. I, I didn't know what that was. So um, I have a geology dictionary, and I had to look up Bowen's reaction seri uh, series. So now I know more about that. Uh, this gentleman saw some lappies. Oh, it's Sassy Sarah. 
uh, saw some lapis in it, but I think it's just because the light that I use, the LED, gives the uh, basalt, the uh, lava rocks, basically, a, uh, a bluish uh, tint to it. Cool coral and lava particles, well-polished, rock fragments, diabase limestone, and these guys are mostly geologists, so they know very specifically fragments, the white ones of quartz, quartz pink, amber, a couple of coral fragments, a lovely little foraminifera in the middle. Uh, there shouldn't be any quartz. In Hawaii, There, you don't find any quartz on the beaches uh, in Hawaii. Uh, somebody saw amber. I didn't see it, but they did refer me to this website. Somebody asked the question, how do you learn about this? And they uh, referred us to this website, mindat.org. Uh, and apparently it's all about minerals, rocks, which are composed of minerals, other names, localities, etc., etc. So these are people that are posting uh, mineral and rock samples uh, onto this website, and you can search them by uh, topic. So let's see if, what happens if we end. If, let's type in for and for Oh, it oh, just does the definition. So, uh, oh, there's all the options. So you can actually find um, some samples of forums on there. Uh, but it's always pleasant to see how much they respond to it. One, one guy says, this gives me nightmares of point counting forums for a professor. Uh, if you're in a, um, in a um, oceanic geology class, uh, they collect forams. They're little tiny things, of course. They're the size of a Saints of Grand, and they sort them by the number of points. And you can end up looking at a microscope all day uh, on a piece of, on a slide, at a slide that has dozens, if not hundreds, of forams, and you're supposed to sort them out by, by sand. That's what he was, uh, that's what he was talking about. Um, let's see, spectacular and uh, visually stunning. Uh, volcanoes along with destroying the puny works of humans, they create incredible beauty. And uh, one comment from Salvucci says, I'm loving all of these sand uh, macros that have been popping up lately. Keep them coming. So they really enjoy them in that red uh, rock on group. But we put in the uh, geology group as well, but uh, we always get a much better response. And that's not a criticism of the geology group, but we always get a much better and more of a response from the Rock Hounds group. So let's take a look at uh, where we collected, where the sample was collected. Uh, if we look at our little house in Bernalillo here, you'd have to travel all the way out into the middle of the Pacific Ocean to Hawaii. And uh, on, on Hawaii, the Hawaii is divided into a number of islands that stretch from what is referred to as the Big Island, but that's actually the island of Hawaii, all the way to Kauai. And uh, Honolulu, which is the capital, is on the island of Oahu. Uh, so, but they refer to this, this island as the Big Island, and this is on what I'd call the northwest coast of the island. Uh, this is Mauna Kea, which is their biggest volcano. They do have another volcano here whose name I cannot pronounce. I tried five times and I just stumble over it. So, uh, so a lot of what you're going to see is the result of that volcanic activity, which continues to grow. You have to remember uh, one of the reasons that you don't see any quartz here is there's no mountains on Hawaii that weren't made by volcanoes. Let me see, did I say that right? All the mountains on Hawaii are made from vol by volcanic action. So there's no quartz in that. But there are other minerals that we'll be able to see. If you see quartz in a Hawaiian, uh, and I had this conversation with one of the folks in the geology Reddit when uh, there were some quartz in a sample of sand. He says, no, there's no quartz in it. And I, I said, there's two options. It could be glass because there was a glass beach nearby. But even more importantly, since this beach was actually an extension of a Marriott property, a Marriott resort, it could be that the beach had been replenished. And when they use replenished beach, they, they pull the sand from wherever they can. Some of that sand might come from beaches on the West Coast or other other locations where it is replenished with sand that will have quartz in it. So generally speaking, you won't see quartz in a, uh, in a sample from Hawaii unless that beach has been replenished. This one does not look like it has. If it looks like quartz, then it is far more likely glass than it is quartz. So the beach is a beautiful beach, uh, Waikoloa Beach, uh, on the northwestern coast of the, uh, the Big Island or the Island of Hawaii, not to be confused with the state of Hawaii, which includes all eight islands, nor to be confused with Wahoo, where the capital Honolulu is. So let's take a look at the sample. Excuse me. Oh, I also was able to get a photograph of the beach, and you'll see these uh, pebble-sized objects here are uh, lava 
basaltic, and because they're li lighter, uh, they'll be washed further up onto the beach. But you can see these colors here, uh, the transition from the light color to the tan color back to the light color. But again, if you look at it very closely, what you can see, let me see, can I zoom that in? I can't from there. Uh, you'll see a lot of the smaller basalt things. Now, I did sort it, as usual, and there were some... Um, there was some uh, material uh, in the sort that were larger than the two millimeters of sand. So I'm going to show you those real quick so we can take a look at them. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, under the light and stored in one of our sample bottles. And as you can see, it's almost equally a light color and a dark color. And that's those, the, the, mafe, the dark colors are the, what they refer to as mafic colors. And they mostly come uh, from uh, volcanic, in this case, lava. Uh, the uh, sample sorted out, It while well, I did have co uh, lighter weight sands, uh, the most obvious sample was the very coarse sand between one millimeter and two millimeters uh, in size. Uh, the objects that I'm first going to show you were the ones that were larger than two millimeters, and that's what they look like. Unfortunately, when I shot this video, I mean this image, uh, that object, the, the longer of the objects, uh, was turned the wrong way. So what you'll see is uh, not only some basalt, but you'll see shell material. Uh, I can't say that any of them look like 4Ms for Aminifera. Uh, I ran the magnet through it, and I got a very nice sample of magnetite. And again, uh, not only did it cover the mag magnet, but there was enough magnetite that it made kind of a hemispherical uh, shape on top of the magnet. But again, that's all from uh, the basalt that was created th that came from, I'm sorry, let me put that a different way. It's basalt that came because it's lava and it was pushed up by the lava into, I mean, it's igneous rock with uh, magnetic uh, characteristics. So uh, let's. Uh, this is the long end view, and as you can see, when I when I uh, do the wide angle view on a sample whose uh, material is uh, just uh, uh, under that two millimeter mark, it shows up pretty big in the sample. But again, you can see uh, the dark color is the mafic igneous rocks that come from lava. These things here that have the greenish color are olivine, which is produced as a result of the magma cooling down into lava. So they're broken up. The white shiny material is shells. I don't see any 4Ms uh, in this particular one, but you do see these broken off. Um, oh, I forgot the name of the uh, urchin, sea urchin spine. See how they have the lines on them? Uh, they do. You'll, you'll see some of that. It's these long ones right here. Those are uh, sea urchin spines that have been broken off, washed into the water, and then eventually and, and nicely rounded and washed up uh, onto the beach. Uh, again, some of that olivine, very beautiful, you know, gemstone quality olivine, but it's only in a grain of sand. I got a close up on one of them because it was just really, really pretty. And then that, that's that beautiful olive color, different from a peridot. So I asked one of the geologists what caused this little shape right there. And that's the result of a bubble uh, popping while the lava was still in magna form. It was still hot and a little air bubble formed on this particular grain and it popped and it left that round circle there. So each of these grains of sand uh, have their own story to tell. So again, here's that. Uh, those are uh, some of the sea urchin spines. Uh, a lot of the dark color. There's our little friend with the uh, circle. That's likely a sea urchin spine. I didn't see any foraminifera in this shot. So I had to look long and hard to find it. Now, you will see some rocks. That comes from that mafic uh, Bowers rounding scale uh, from the color. So they are igneous rocks that are pushed up uh, with the magna up onto the surface and uh, included in this. Uh, but then the, all that white material is uh, either, uh, well, most of this is shell material. When you start seeing colors, you'll start seeing coral. So for example, that's more likely coral up here in the upper right hand corner. I thought I saw some red material as well, which again is more likely coral. But I found this beautiful little forum just perfectly shaped a uh, tiny little forearm that was just amazing to look at. And in the context, when I kind of zoomed back, I saw just everything that I would want in a single shot. So here, this one is uh, sea urchin. This and that and that are olivine. This is um, uh, uh, coral. Uh, and then there's a lot of shell material. So I don't know. And then right here, a little bit, a little tiny bit of shell material. So I don't know how it gets any more diverse. Now, the person who thought they saw 
uh, lapis, which is this blue color. It, it was actually my fault because of uh, the lighting. I use an LED ring light to take these pictures, and it gives off kind of a bluish cast. It's warmer. It's in the like 6100 Kelvin range, and I didn't correct it. So that looks black. It's actually blue. It's the light that gives it. Uh, I'm sorry, it's actually black. Uh, but it's the light that gives it that bluish uh, tint. But if you look at that, remember that's smaller than two millimeters and um, and uh, fell through the screen. But it's an, a beautiful 4M that could be, you know, hundreds if not tens of thousands if not millions of years old uh, as it made it up onto shore. So I was really happy to see that. Another shot of it that included some olivine. Now, this one has a, a little bit of an amber color to it. So I, the only way that could be caused is by adding iron. So as it was cooling, it picked up some of the iron that was in the lava and added it to this color. So in kid, the green color is called, uh, caused by magnesium, uh, but the orange color is called, caused by uh, iron. So all in all, I thought it was an outstanding sample and really good to look through. I'm going to take it over. I'm going to go over to the uh, maps for just a second. And of course, these links, both the photos and the maps, are in the description box below if you'd like to go look at them independently of the show uh, yourself. Uh, and that would be WSP0033 photos. Now, I do want to point out that if you change that 3-3 three, three in there from any number from 0 to 3-3, three, three, you can see all our other photo albums as well. We've got 33 samples that we've created photo albums for, and the easiest way to get to them is bit.ly slash WSB 0 and then just the number, you know, from 1 to 33. Uh, followed by the word photos. The, the capitalization is important. The WSP must be capitalized and the P in photos must be capitalized. And that way you can take a look at any of our other samples as well. Okay, so let's go. Oops, I didn't want to go to photos. I wanted to go to, I said I wanted to go to maps. Bitly slash W. And the same is true of maps, right? So if you enter 0033 maps, you can do the same for our other samples, uh, just change the number and you go to the maps. That actually takes you to Google Maps and when you close it, right to the location that we were looking at. So that was the sample uh, that you saw earlier. I'm going to go into 3D mode and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit closer. We're going to go into globe mode as well. So get as much detail as you can. There are some really pretty pictures on here. Uh, and, and this is on the beach that's just south of it. Uh, but you can see classic, uh, you know, kind of beautiful Hawaiian uh, beach sunsets because it is facing the northwest. So uh, good looking. And then, of course, there's some of that uh, lava flow that makes it out into the ocean that freezes up there. And all of the material that you see in here eventually is washed into the ocean and then refined, if you will, in the ocean. But it comes from that lava flow that uh, is igneous and basaltic in its uh, nature or uh, mafic, as it's called. Now, I thought I did have a better, uh, let me see, I'm gonna bring the little yellow guy up, except he turns into a merman. And let's see, this is, I'm gonna go further up. So this is actually uh, Waikoloa Beach right here. So let's put that right there, see if he pops up, yeah. Let's take a look at the beach. And this is where I got that uh, picture of, uh, of the sand on the beach. Um, so nice little Hawaiian beach, boats out in the uh, bay, uh, people running around. And you can see that combination, there's a dark streak. Uh, so first the lighter basaltic pebbles are up here at the top at the high water mark, but you can see a lot of color, dark color, mafic color in the sand uh, itself. So pretty good shot, good looking beach. I mean, are there any bad looking beaches on Hawaii? I don't think so. So thanks to Ken Shelton for uh, taking that, um, that, uh, what do you call it, panorama for us. So let's take a look at the pictures from that area. There were some pretty good ones. I liked, let me see, there was one that I, this one right here, which was sunset. So you have, when you have that west setting, sun setting direction, makes for a really great picture. That was taken by Vladimir Sulin. And again, uh, that link is down in the description box below. So if you want to get to this location to see some of the pictures, I, either via uh, Google, if you, let me get, let me go back one more time and go back to this. I can capture the little guy 
And if you want to see anything, let me see if you've got one right here. So this is further up from the beach and walking back to the resort. So, but all that ground, that was, that's lava and lava rock and igneous rock that was pull, pushed up as, uh, as a result of the lava. So there you go. So you'd fly to Honolulu first, and then from Honolulu you take a hop over to uh, what they call the Big Island, and that's where you'd find this location. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, sample. I'm going to leave the Reddit thing uh, for a minute, and don't forget uh, this mindat or mindat.org uh, for a helpful resource for mineral specimens, rock specimens. They have descriptions, pictures, et cetera, et cetera, and a way to search through it. So very convenient. I've already added it to my bookmarks. All right, so this is the uh, larger sample, and that long object that you see there is, uh, is a sea urchin spine. The rest look like either shell material. This is a little bit of the lava rock right in here. So I'm going to move it up so you get a little better lighting on it. So this is in the crucible. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a couple of things. Let me, I'm going to go back to full screen for just a minute so I can share something with you. Full frame. Okay. So what I normally do is I put the sample of sand in a lot. This is a quartz crucible. Uh, and uh, it's designed to do things like this in the laboratory for something. And that's the picture that you get from it, right? You've seen this before. And I'm, I'm going to flip to it in just a second. But uh, there's another microsp microscopy channel, and uh, it's run by a gentleman. It's called uh, by something, something Hunter. I just, for I just forgot it. Uh, uh, microbe Hunter. His name is Microbe Hunter. His name, his real name is Oliver. His YouTube channel is Microbe Hunter. Uh, but he does a lot of things. He's actually a teacher, a, a science teacher in, a lab, in um, high school in Germany. Uh, but recently he was on, and somebody sent him this recommendation to make a slide from sand. I, I haven't done that yet, only because I found the crucible so convenient. Uh, so, but he, he, you make these using uh, clear nail polish, and you coat your slide, your blank slide, with a nail polish, and you spill the sand on it. And when it dries, it comes out like this. So we're going to try looking at it through um, uh, through the uh, stereo microscope today to see uh, what's in it. But I want to show you so, and and you'll be able to see the difference because this is what it looks like when I've got the material in the crucible, and it's multiple layers thick. And again, you can see, I thought, let me make sure, I thought I had seen a another 4M. So it's not as easier to see right there. And here's, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see all the objects that are in this little corner up here because this is probably the most interesting part of this sample because it covers a lot of territory. I'm trying to get as much as I can in. And I'll move this up just a little this way and a little that way. Okay, so this is pretty much the entirety of this sample in one image. Uh, so a spine from a sea urchin uh, lava rock, a basaltic rock, a foram right there. Let's see if I can lower the light just a little bit so you can make it out better. That's the only problem with these cameras is these cameras correct for what they think is the, I don't have, I don't actually have control of it. So a uh, piece of olivine, uh, another sample of uh, the spine, uh, or sea urchin spine, but look at this little tiny, what looks to me like a conch shell uh, right there. So everything that you'd want to see in this particular sample, the variety that you want to sample, and of course there's a rock right there. That's a, you know, igneous rock. Everything that you'd want to see as you were viewing this sample through the microscope is in this one little object. So let me, uh, I'm going to move it back towards the center and see if I can find any other form. I, I haven't found any other forums, but it, but you can see the variety. Let me just see if I can change the exposure here. Just bring it down just a little bit so we can get some of the detail in there. 
and increase the contra contrast. So you lose some of the detail in the color, but I think you can see some of the detail that we lost in the uh, whites. And uh, what I wanted to point out is there's another one of those miniature little conch shells right there in the center. And I think that is just an amazing piece of uh, nature's uh, work. Just, I don't know, you know, it left me speechless when I saw it. Like, that's just, it's a perfectly, a perfectly shaped conch shell, um, spiral shell, the size of a grain of sand, you know? So let me, let me see if I can zoom in even further than that. Oh, we're going to go max zoom here. Let's see if we can get it. There you go. So... I don't know about you guys, but, you know, like I said, when Sarah was visiting a couple of weeks ago, she said, how do you not spend all your day sitting here looking in this stereo microscope at these uh, objects? And sometimes I do, just because they're so amazing, and I'm always surprised at what you find. And, you know, it doesn't make a difference. Last uh, Wednesday, we looked at a sample from... Uh, Lake Chelan in Washington, and it tended to be a, a little bit more rocky than this, a lot more rocky, actually. I mean, it didn't have any shell material or forams in it, but it did have fossils. And so each one of these has its, you know, its own dynamics, its own uh, diversity, and uh, its own set of colors that are unique to that area and can be explained uh, geologically. Uh, perfectly geologically. This is this is my dark material because I think that was the other forum. That I, yeah. So it, it's hard because it's right against the other edge of the glass, but you can see the characteristic little tiny holes uh, all around the forearm that come from the forearm that are made as a result of the forearm's long spindly legs that it uses to capture food smaller than it is. And then... There was two things. Number one, this uh, mushroom-capped shape shell and this beautiful piece of, you know, these are the ones that I see and I think to myself, how do I turn that into a gemstone and uh, put it in a mounting and give it to somebody? Because how beautiful is that? How beautiful a grain of sand is that, you know? So let's see the difference between this and taking a look at the sample that I used nail polish to glue to uh, the slide and see if how much difference it is. So I'm going to start by zooming out first. And so the first thing that you noticed is there's no layers. You can, you can almost see, you know, there's a single layer of material. So I think you see a lot more of it, I guess. But you can see pretty much the same, uh, the same stuff right there. Uh, a another shell object, a miniature shell object. Uh, but you can see at the edge of the slide the, um, uh, the nail polish uh, that I used to stick it on. And basically the technique is you spread the nail polish on the slide, you pour the sand onto it, kind of make a pile of sand onto it, and then give it about 10 minutes for the nail polish to dry, shake off the excess, and you're left with this kind of cool little slide. And I did give it its number. I, I number all our samples. So I've started to add this. I haven't figured out quite how to store them because the way that you, uh, the way, um, the way that you store this material is. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The way that you store the slides, it's too. They they use they kind of use edges of the slides. And I'm I don't know that I messed it up, but when you put rocks on it like this, it doesn't fit into the slide holders. So let's zoom in just a little bit because I was really surprised at uh, the number of pieces of shell that I saw this. I don't think it's going to help. So I'm going to turn on the backlight just to see if it makes any, if it helps any. Yeah, that's not going to help. Let's not do, let's not do that. Let's zoom in. Oh, you can, oh, gosh. So who knows how long I was off on my own there, having my own good little time. <laughs> so uh, amazing back. Okay. So I'm not. Okay. Hang on. Okay. 
So thank you guys for doing that. Somebody actually sent me a text message letting me know that you couldn't see the, uh, the sample. So I'm um, so yes or no. Tell me that you did see that that you did see the sample uh, that I showed you in the crucible, right? We uh, we uh, we did see that, and uh, you saw all of that. And then what I did is I flipped back to full frame so I could show you the slide, and then I started with the slide. So. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. So l let me know how much you didn't see. Well, that was kind of silly of me, wasn't it? Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, uh, let me see how far back. Oh gosh. It was a 15 minutes worth of not saying, saying this sample. All right, so you guys do me a favor and tell me if you saw the sample in the crucible because I don't know how far I missed that or you just missed this, the sample on the slide and I'll go back as far as I have to. We have a up to the sand slide. Okay, so, so you did see the material in the crucible. All right, so let's go to the sand slide now and I'm going to put that under the microscope. And uh, it's, like I said, I'll, I'll have to repeat everything now, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, like I said, uh, the sample is slightly different because, uh, because it's just a single layer. So you can see, I, I always feel like you can see more details in it. And as I, I'm going to straighten this out. I'm just going to literally scroll up and down. So in, in, in my world, this is up and down. But I can also scroll right and left. And again, the diversity, you got to remember this all came from, you know, a spoonful of material or a, a couple of spoonfuls of material from one spot on one beach in uh, Hawaii. And, um, and that's what makes it amazing. And, you know, you're walking on the sand and you see, sometimes you see the differences in colors and, uh, and things like that, but you don't realize that there's so much diversity in all of this, uh, all of what you're looking at under your feet. You know, that's that's what always surprises me. Now, uh, again, what you'll see, anything that has that right here where you see that little set of lines, that was produced by something organic, a creature, right? Uh, there's other material that's just shell material or... Um, uh, I'll think of it here in a minute, coral, uh, that has the color. So when you see something like that, that reddish color, that came from coral. But uh, you'll, if you can see right here, I'm going to scroll over to it because it's probably the same thing that I was talking about while, while uh, you guys couldn't see anything and I was having a good time on my own. It's kind of nuts when you think about it. I'm going to scroll in there and you're going to see a little miniature conch shell. And that miniature conch shell was created by some creature that needed a home and then abandoned it. So uh, all of these things, a lot of these things are organic in the sense that uh, they were created by creatures that used them for homes. And then the dark material, a lot of the dark material is uh, produced by nature as magma comes up from the volcano, as we mentioned the islands are all volcanic in nature, and the magma, as it cools, forms little bubbles. It collects chemicals, and these chemicals turn into minerals, and this is a mineral called olivine. And olivine is basically a form of uh, quartz, uh, but it has uh, uh, magnesium added to it, and the magne magnesium creates the green color. Sometimes there's a little bit of aluminum uh, in it. If it's got a reddish tint or a yellow-orange tint, then it's because uh, f uh, iron was added to it, ferrous oxide was added to it as it was cooling, and so it captures that, uh, that color. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to leave you with a shot here and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see the variety. And I'm going to do what I didn't do before, and that is pay it. just go through the chat room real quick so I can catch up with you guys so you're not off there in Never Never Land while I'm not watching. Okay, so we got JK Pioneer, T.I. Madison in the room, Mark Connor, because I can, Bertha Chacon, Birdie, hi. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, we can't see it. T.I. T.I. Maddie's yelling. Tammy yelling at me. I can't see it. Um, okay. Might want to check where Shelly. Shelly and I have agreed. Uh, I think I mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. Shelly and I have agreed that she needs that time to work on our new business, uh, which is not a YouTube-based business. It's a It's a digital business, but it's not YouTube based. And it's called the, uh, sales leaders Institute. And, um, she's putting, uh, a couple of hours a day uh, in on that. And we decided that I would continue the world sand project because it's my hobby and uh, she could use that time more efficiently in sales, uh, leaders Institute. So, all right. Now that, now that you guys can see it, uh, Debbie, and I think your sample is coming up in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, so we'll see it then. There we are. So, uh, as I said, this is uh, mounted on that slide uh, on which I painted uh, clear nail polish, uh, which was funny because I bought the nail polish. I, I, I don't ever remember. This was the first time I bought nail polish. There was a lot of it because I had uh, four daughters and a spouse. There was always a lot of nail polish around the house, but I never actually had to buy a bottle. Uh, and uh, so this was the first for me. Uh, but... Uh, it worked. I, I painted the, the slide with the nail polish and uh, poured the sand on top of it, waited till it dried and sprinkled it off and it came out looking pretty good. So the colored material that you see down there towards the bottom, that red material here is coral. The lighter material tends to be shell. If it's got color to it, generally speaking, and it's got that polished kind of look that it gets from the water uh, uh, rushing over, you know, washing over it continuously. Uh, that tends to be uh, coral. And then the shell material always has a whiter color. The dark material is mafic and likely uh, lava or uh, a basaltic in nature, but it's igneous rock that comes from the lava with all kinds of little tiny details in it. So uh, right there and there. And then as I said, a lot of these darker uh, pieces are magnetite. They're magnetic because uh, as you saw in the picture from the magnet shot, um, uh, I collected a lot of it. And then there's one of those, uh, they look like, you know, gemstones to me. I don't know how else to describe them. Very, uh, it frustrates me that I just can't reach into that image and pull out that beautiful gemstone olivine. So, but such is life. We can't do that. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this sample. Um, I wondered if Toby bought the nail polish. Yes, I bought the nail polish. I had to go to Walgreens, and I had to ask where the nail polish was. I didn't know where nail polish was. I've never bought nail polish before. I can tell you where the shaving cream is and the and the deodorant, but I couldn't tell you where the nail polish was. It's over there by the lipstick. So, and then of course, getting I the, the other thing I, I thought I could say clear nail polish. There's 25 variations of clear nail polish not just different manufacturers for different reasons. So I had a little, uh, that was an interesting thing. I said, I just need one. And I tried to explain what I was going to do with it. Uh, I just need one so I can spread on a uh, microscopy, microscopy slide. And then I'm going to sprinkle sand on it. And the woman just looked at me like I was crazy. So uh, I, I knew she, she either thought I was crazy or lying, you know, like, so... Anyway, it was fun, and uh, and it works. It works. It gives you a real nice uh, slide. So I haven't, still haven't figured out this polarizing microscope. I do, you know, I can use it as a normal uh, uh, lab microscope, and it gives a very detailed shot of everything. But it's not as much fun as looking through the stereo microscope, which doesn't have the same level of magn magnification. I'm, I'm uh, pretty happy with it. So uh, let me see if I can scroll this over. I want to find another one of those little... Uh, beautiful little, you know, I know I was talking about it's the little conical shaped shell and uh, bragging about it and you guys couldn't see it. And then by the time I had, uh, yeah, I had realized you weren't seeing any of this, I kind of lost track of it. So let me see if I can find another one real quick. If I can't, I'll, I'll find it later and then take a picture of it. 
But I can't tell you how good. I, I wish you could have seen it because it sure looked good. Sorry you missed it. You know, My fault. My bad. And it's tough. I'll have to get better at uh, doing this uh, on my own because, uh, you know, it's it's kind of neat to have Shelly here to be able to help with that. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I'll have to get better at it uh, when I'm here on my own. I think what I'll have to do, so this is my, uh, I have a, uh, the, Stream monitor is on an iPad, and the microscope is over here on my uh, on another table. Microscopes, um, so uh, I guess I'll have I'll move the stream the pad the iPad over to the same side where the uh, where the microscope is, and that we're gonna do here. I'm gonna go back to the window shot. You guys deserve five more minutes of this beautiful sample. So because I cheated you out of fifteen. So. Uh, and and what's kind of fun is sharing this with that Reddit group and asking them what they see, and they're the ones that tell me, you know, what all this different uh, these different colors are. The the colors are coral. The light colors are um, are uh, shell material, and uh, some of the material, as I said, like like always, I told you the story is uh, fish poop uh, because uh, the parrotfish. Uh, chomp off the coral and they suck off the bacteria on the coral. It's actually a symbiotic relationship, uh, and they suck uh, they 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 suck off the material the bacteria that's on the coral and then they they poop it out. Now, it's not it does go through their digestive system, but it's not like poop. It's just clean coral. Of course, then the ocean washes it even uh, further. So a lot of this coral is basically fish poop. Now the olivine, the olivine, uh, actually is the result of the uh, lava flows. You know, the lava doing what it does, and then as it cools, it collects these the minerals that are inside the lava. And like all lava flows, it has lots and lots of minerals inside of it. So that colored material that you see there, the red and the orange colors, uh, will tend to be... Uh, coral rather than shell material. But anytime you see those little lines, uh, you can you can conclude that the little lines are made part of as part of some organic uh, some life form making a home for itself and then eventually divesting itself of that home because it grows, right? So that's where all that uh, comes from and, and What's interesting, what I read uh, yet last night, was that if you start out as a creature, uh, whatever you are, and, and it gave me all the uh, biologic, the, the, the terms for them, I, didn't, I couldn't memorize them all. Uh, but if you start out in life making a conch-style shell, when you leave that conch-style shell, you will simply make another larger conch-style shell. Uh, so you, once you decide, once you're your whatever your evolutionary your DNA says because they do have DNA uh, says you need to live in a conch shell you live in a conch shell the rest of your life eventually you'll make a conch shell so big that when you divest yourself of it or whatever it's called when you get rid of it uh, it will be inhabited by a hermit crab who uh, use them to you know they don't build it out but like the original creature did but uh, but they do live in it very comfortably. As a matter of fact, I think you used to be able to, if you go to Hawaii, you can actually buy a hermit crab living in a, a small conch shell. I don't think you can bring it home with you. So you have to figure out what to do with it before you leave the hotel. All right, so uh, this, you go through the pictures, you have access to the pictures at bit, B-I-T dot L-Y slash W-S-P 0033 photos and take a look at some of this stuff. It's just amazing. And uh, diverse and gives you a sense, you know, our motto is you can see the world, you see, we see the world in a grain of sand. And when you look at a sample like this, you just go, like, all the diversity and all the origins, if you go back and understand how all of this material was created from the lava to the coral to the shell material uh, to the olivine to the foraminifera, which could go back literally hundreds of millions of years. Uh, it really gives you a sense on what this planet is all about. And the more I learn about it, the more excited I get uh, about it. And I hope uh, I hope that comes off in uh, some ways because I want you to know that I uh, I love this stuff. I think it's pretty cool.
So before I leave, I do want to say uh, hi to Zena Negra, Negra uh, from Stockholm. Uh, she has, or he, he or she, I don't know, uh, has, uh, I've seen them in the My- Microbe Hunter channel, and uh, they've made comments on some of his as well. And, um, and uh, I know he was aware, he or she was aware, Zena was aware that Microbe Hunter did show that s- shared with us that approach to, you know, to using the nail polish on the, on the slide to, to show sand. So we may be using that more often. I've just got to figure out how to store them. So, all right. I uh, haven't laughed all week. Thanks for the laughter today. Sorry I yelled at you. Okay, don't worry about it, Tammy. I hope, uh, I'm glad that I made you laugh. So none of us are perfect. And again, we will see you at four o'clock with the softer side uh, where Shelly's going to interview me about our new business. And then uh, uh, there will be no A Gypsy's Kiss tonight at seven o'clock. Uh, since we're uh, we're allowing our studio to be used by a nonprofit to discuss to answer questions about the coronavirus, uh, I did post that on the announcement that we make. So if you want to join us tonight on that channel, you're perfectly welcome to. It's on Facebook. Thanks for today, and I apologize. Uh, we got to figure out some way. You know, uh, I I also didn't have my phone on, so if I turned it on, you guys could have texted me there, but that was my fault. I won't make the same mistake again. I hope. All right. Have a good uh, have a good afternoon. Have a good weekend. If I don't see you again, bye bye.